We're a week into the NBA season so far, and the level of competition has been excellent. It's been a ton of close games, compelling storylines, and surprisingly cold and hot starts for teams. The Celtics' hot 3-1 start isn't exactly surprising, but it was important to get some early momentum, keep the confidence high and the top seed in sight. Two of the three wins came against projected top seeds in the East with Philly and Miami, and the third was a hard-fought win in a back-to-back -back over the Magic. They got jumped by the Bulls for their only loss of the year, and while it was a fairly miserable game all around for the Celtics, it's really not worth losing sleep over. It was a good look at where this team needs to improve to get to the level of play that's expected of them and that they expect of themselves. Just as it was the case during preseason, drawing any major conclusions through four regular season games is mostly useless and destined to age poorly. I think it's more productive to list off some observations and explore how they might develop moving forward. Let's jump right into it with five observations from the Celtics opening week. Tatum's early season struggles before elevating to near MVP levels mid-season are so well documented that it's become a running joke at this point. That is, until this season, where Tatum is off to his best start ever and already looks to be in mid-season form. He's averaging 32.5 points per game, with games of 26, 29, 35, and a season-high 40 against Orlando. This gives him the opportunity to gain some early momentum in the MVP race instead of joining in late, and it's been crucial for the Celtics' offense that he's operating at such a high level. The Celtics won't need this version of Tatum for the entire season, but for the moment, Brogdon is still adjusting to his new role and other players are trying to find their footing as well. On the other end of the ball, his defense has been as solid as usual, and there are even some signs of growth, most noticeably in his demeanor. He seems more aggressive defending on ball, and really taking certain matchups personal, like picking up rookie Paolo Bencaro from half court or viciously swatting Tyler Hero in a 1v1 situation. Don't look now, but he's currently averaging a career-high 1.3 blocks per game. The all-defense agenda is strong. Moving on to something slightly critical, but more so constructive, let's talk about the trio of guards. The Celtics have three high-quality players in Brogdon, Smart, and White. Each of them has had nice games and moments, but the consistency hasn't quite been there yet. Brogdon deserves patience as he's continuing to adapt to the new role and find his moments to be aggressive. Out of the trio, he's been the most constant scoring threat, which is to be expected, but it's fair to say that he's still adjusting. He's averaging 12 points per game, but it's not on his typical level of high efficiency, and his comfort in the offense is understandably not perfect. You can see the flashes of brilliance though, especially on opening night which I believe should be the blueprint for how he approaches the season from a scoring perspective. Overall, I'm still excited about the addition, of course, and I don't expect it to take long for things to click. Marcus Smart hasn't been bad, but he can certainly play better. For someone that's consistently a high-impact player, he's a minus 13 on the season and hasn't posted a single game plus-minus greater than zero. With Smart on the court, the Celtics have an offensive rating of 117.2, and with him off, that rises to 126.6. Both figures are strong, but with the Celtics' defense struggling a bit to start the year, the offense has been what's kept them afloat. I trust Marcus to play into form, and his playmaking has definitely been on point to start the year. Derek White has been the most impactful of this group in my opinion. His scoring has been all over the place as he tries to find his own role with the starters, but the defense has been very good and he's above 40% from three in large part due to his 27-point, 5-for-9-from-3 outburst against the Magic. In comparison to Smart, White is a plus 24 on the season, finishing with a positive plus-minus in each game. Also, the Celtics have an 122 offensive rating with him on the court and 116.8 when he's off. Overall, I remain of the opinion that this is still the strongest position for the Celtics, and while I believe they've shown that so far, there's still plenty of room to grow, and that excites me. Give it a few more weeks and these three should play off each other effortlessly. As a day one Jalen Brown respecter, I like what I've seen to start the season. Now it hasn't all been good, with a 4 for 16 performance against the Magic, followed by 8 for 23 against the Bulls. He was missing some easy looks and couldn't truly get going in either game. 
With that said, we can't just discount the 35 points and 28 points that came before it. We continue to like the on-ball work that I believe is carried over from the preseason. Brown is shooting 44.4% on pull-ups and is playing with good pace in those scenarios. Some of his pick and roll reps are encouraging too, but a next step in that process is finding looks for his teammates more often. Defensively, he's bringing it on that end, with career highs of 1.5 blocks per game and 1.3 steals. But he and the team as a whole could definitely benefit from more on-ball pressure as teams have gotten too comfortable attacking ball screens. This leads me quite smoothly into my next talking point, the defense. The game against the Bulls made it clear that the Celtics aren't defending as well as they did last year. Whether that's cause for concern depends on who you ask, but I'm certain the defense will get back to its usual dominance as the sample of games grows. The weakness right now, as I alluded to a moment ago, is the pick and roll defense. There's been two reasons for this. The screen navigation has been poor, and the bigs are much too deep in their drop coverage. The good news is they have the personnel to fix the first issue, and players will just have to impact the ball more. The drop coverage is more of a question about how deep the Celtics are planning to play it, because I don't hate the coverage, I think it has its strengths. But if an offense knows that's your default for ball screens with the bigs involved, ball handlers are just going to seek that out often. It may be an attempt to protect Horford a bit, but he's such a strong isolation defender, you gotta let him defend in space at least from time to time to throw up the offense. Now I don't know a ton about Vonley's ability to defend in space himself, but he's fairly mobile, so the depth of his drop really doesn't make a ton of sense to me. That's the biggest hole to patch up, and I'll be interested to see how they approach it, but it's certainly on the team's radar now. Fortunately, the Celtics switching still looks effortless, and these guys have an extra gear or two when the time comes. With the defense out of the way, let's close out the video on a more positive note. With the belief that the Celtics defense returns to top 5 levels, that makes the offense much more encouraging. The idea was there, and we're seeing it actualized a bit to start the year, with the Celtics boasting an offensive rating of 119, the third highest mark in the league. They have the 9th best field goal percentage at 47.7%, the 8th best 3 point percentage of 38.7%, and the fourth best free throw percentage at 84.3%. They're scoring a ton of points and they've been doing it efficiently so far. The ball movement has been good, but there's another level for that to get to. The assists per game are only at 22.8 currently, and that's a number that I'm hopeful will sit closer to 26 as the team gets in a rhythm. More off ball actions is what I'd really like to see in that regard. The stuff they're running now is really nice with the continuation of their double pin down series. They're likely still building that stuff into the game plan, but in the past they've gone away from it when it was very effective and I'd like to see that trend be broken this year. Four games into the season, there's clearly work to be done, but just as it was the case last year, we could all benefit from being patient with our rookie head coach and the new additions. Thanks again for watching, and let me know what you're encouraged and or worried by from the Celtics 3-in-1 start. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.